Okay, what we're going to do in this video is bring together just about everything we've done just far in all the previous videos. And it's going to be as follows here. We're actually going to do a little science experiment. We're going to measure gravity using the Arduino. That's right. The Earth has a certain acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second per second. And we're going to measure that, we'll show you how. As we saw in previous videos, we have this construct in electronics called a voltage divider. That if we place two resistors like this and sort of put a voltage across both of them, we can get an output voltage, which is always a fraction of the input voltage, where the output voltage depends on some relationship between R1 and R2. Now, typically, V out is less than V in, but that's what we get. And V out depends on R2 and R1. So we've seen several cases now where if we replace, say, R2 with a potentiometer or a thermistor or one of the photocells, which is sensitive to light, we can get a V out, which sort of depends on that physical quantity. So what we're going to do in this video to measure gravity is we're going to replace R2 with a potentiometer. So our circuit is going to look something like this. Let's just take some of these lines out right here. The second resistor down here isn't going to be a fixed resistor. It's going to be a potentiometer. So I'm going to take that potentiometer here. I'll sort of break with tradition of always using schematics like that. There's the three leads on the potentiometer like that. Here's that long axis coming out like this. We're going to connect it to something like this and like that. As we discussed in previous videos when we were talking about the potentiometers, these two leads right here are where the resistance changes when this axis is rotated. And so you see we have the potentiometer in here serving as R2. And so what we can expect then is we can still measure V out at this same place, this center point right here relative to ground right there, something like this. But now as you can see, this V out parameter is going to be a function of how far this potentiometer has been turned one way or the other. As long as this potentiometer axis is turning, I'm turning here, you can't really see it on the video, but I'm turning it here, V out will change. So we essentially have V out related to the angular position of the potentiometer knob. Okay, So that's the circuit we're going to build. And what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to build something like this. We're going to take that potentiometer Here's that long axis coming out of it like this. Here's our three leads, and you know where they're going to be connected to. And we're going to take and we're going to connect it to a piece of wood like this. A strip of wood, I don't know, a couple feet long, something like that. We'll drill a hole in the center to put the potentiometer in, and we'll put a set screw right there like this. And what we're going to do with the, the potentiometer here is we're going to sort of get it mounted or clamped at the table somehow so it doesn't move. So now what will happen is that if we take this so-called pendulum here and pull it off to the side like this. Let's say it's like this. We're going to pull it off to the side. It's going to start swinging back and forth and back and forth. And as it swings, the wood is going to cause the potentiometer handle to rotate back and forth and back and forth. What that's going to do, as the, poten as the pendulum swings and the potentiometer axis turns, R2 is going to change. And as R2 changes, V out is going to change. So V out will essentially be an indicator of the position of the pendulum. So let's just think for a minute what we might get from V out as this pendulum swings. So as the pendulum swings one way and the other, one way and the other, R2 is going to spend its time sort of getting large, then small, then large, then small, then large, then small, as the pendulum oscillates. And if you remember from a previous video, this output voltage is R2 over R1 plus R2 times V out. So what we're going to expect here, if R2 here, which is this parameter right here, the potentiometer gets large then small, then large then small, V out is going to be a large fraction of V out, then it's going to be a small fraction of V out. Excuse me, V out is going to be a large fraction of V in, then it's going to be a small fraction of Vn, then a large fraction of Vn, then a small fraction of Vn. In other words, V out is just going to go up and down. So as the pendulum swings, what we might expect then, if we sort of made a graph here of what we're going to expect from V out, the center tap voltage on the voltage divider right there as time goes on. In other words, as the pendulum swings, what are we going to expect? Well, we'll expect V out to be high then it'll be low, then it'll be high, then it'll be low, then it'll be high, then it'll be low. Below. It's going to look something like this. In other words, V out is going to track the position of the pendulum. It's going to look like a so-called sine wave or a sinusoid like that. 
Now where is gravity going to come from? Well, what we can do is if we can determine how long it takes this thing to oscillate between the same position, say a maximum like that, we can call that the period of the pendulum, let's call it t. And there's an equation in physics which we're certainly not going to worry about where it comes from, but you just trust me on this, that pendulums are all about gravity, and so gravity turns out is going to be equal to the number 8 times pi squared, where pi is 3.1415 and so on, times L over 3t squared. So if we can just make a precise determination of t, the period of this pendulum, the period is the time it takes to go between two points, like two crests or two valleys or something. If we can just determine that and measure the length of the pendulum. That's very easy to do with a tape measure. We should be able to get g. So that's going to be the plan. But the next sort of issue here, and we should be ready to tackle this issue, is what do we do about measuring v out like that? Because v out, the pendulum is going to be swinging, maybe with a period of a couple of seconds like that. And if we have our voltage divider sort of all set up like this. So remember it is just a voltage divider right here. Here's our Vn right here as we did before. And I won't draw the potentiometer anymore but a variable resistor is often drawn as a resistor with an arrow going through it indicating that its resistance can change here. Here's my V out right here. How are we going to measure V out? Well it turns out that the best way to doing that of getting a lot of data points so we don't miss any of the dynamics of the pendulum's motion is just to use the Arduino. We're not going to look at it on a voltmeter and try and jot numbers down as fast as we can as the pendulum swings, swings, no way, that won't work at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that Arduino like this, and remember this line right about here on the board is our A0, and right about down here is our ground connection. So we're going to take V out, and we're going to run one of those lines right here into A0, and the other line into ground like this. So we're going to treat the Arduino it's going to be our Arduino voltmeter again. And what we'll do when we get everything set up is we have a bit of software that we can write that we can use to log the analog input on this line here with time. Because the Arduino, it turns out, if you sort of dig around in the documentation, has a function built in called millis. And millis returns the number of milliseconds that have gone by since the Arduino was powered up. So if we read an analog input, and write the time at which it occurred, at which we, that read occurred, right to the screen, we can grab those values, paste them into Excel, plot them, determine the period, and determine G of the pendulum. So we'll present sort of the pendulum's construction in the next video, take some data, we'll show you some of the R&D we don't code, and we'll see how we do with getting G. But a little science experiment here based on a voltage divider pendulum.